Us is against uh, Indianapolis Northwest against Elston. However, some quality wins along the way. Let's continue on with uh, Coach Chris Giesman. Coach, first of all, it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, you've been doing this head coaching thing going into 1981. Had a lot of success so far, but another Giesman first, if you will. First time uh, two, Chris Giesman team gets shut out on back-to-back -back nights or back-to-back -back Friday nights. A loss against Indianapolis Northwest six to nothing, and a loss to Elston six to nothing. Uh, very interesting way, but still, you guys were able to bounce back and finish strong. Yeah, we uh, we had a great quarterback that year, named Mark Hummel, and he had he had knee surgery during two days, and uh, never forget the play. It was a uh, it was a boot, and everybody went with the fake, and he carried the ball, and at 20 yards downfield, he starts limping a little bit. Now, he'd hurt his knee the previous year, and uh, he was going to have an off-season knee surgery, and the physician said he didn't need it, just rehab it. So now it's, uh, he, he's limping. I said, are you okay? He said, no. I thought, I was hoping I misheard him. So I asked him again. I said, are you okay? He said, no, I'm not. My knee. And I said, oh. And uh, he ended up having to have surgery. And uh, that just, he was going to be the focal point of our offense. And to show how important he was, he got back at mid-year and, and won a scholarship to Western Michigan playing half a year. No interceptions. I can't remember what his stats were. The great, great pass, and we passed like crazy that year. And they worked with Jerry Pajikowski. They lived together during the summer, and they threw every day. And uh, we were counting on that. Well, our we had two backups. One of them started the first game. One of them started the second game. And they both we both got shut out both games. And it was. Uh, I just uh, figured, man, I don't know what it's going to be like, and uh, it was like, it was like, we didn't say it, but we got to get Hummel back somehow. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we had a great sophomore class that year. That was a sophomore class that when they were seniors won the state, and uh, we end up with Mark Quigley, a sophomore quarterback, at start. And he leads us to a couple of wins, and uh, we're pretty happy. In the meantime, Hummel is back rehabbing like crazy after having his surgery. It wasn't ACL; it was uh, the other one that's you know not as not as serious, but it's still it's operable. So he's going and he's rehabbing like crazy. I mean, you oh, every time you see him, he's re rehabbing, and we get to the point where we're going to play Elkhart Central undefeated, Mishawaka undefeated. And uh, our scouts were putting all the emphasis on these two games. And I remember saying, I don't, he said, I don't think we can beat Elkhart Central even with Hummel. So let's hold him out and bring him back from Mishawaka. I think with him we can beat Mishawaka. So, uh, Mark got a tentative release from his doctor on the week of uh, Elkhart Central. We're still limping. And I told him what we're going to do. I said, you know, our scouts, quite honestly, I said, I'm not telling this to the team, but I'm telling you. I said, they don't think we can beat Elkhart Central even with you, but we could beat Mr. Walk if we got you back. And uh, he said, well, he said, you see me working out. Rehab, and I said, Yeah. He said, I'm not doing that to sit down. He said, I want to play Friday night against Elkhart. I said, Well, I like your attitude, but let's see how practice goes. So he now, he's not taking starters reps, he's taking backup reps. He looks pretty good. And uh, he told me, He says, I feel good. And uh, he said, I want to play. So I named him the starter. And uh, <coughs> We got to Rice Field the next night, and uh, talking to Tom, he said, my people told me Hummel wasn't going to play, and there he is. <laughs> yeah, I said, I don't know, you know, he may play some. I didn't tell him he was going to start. 
Well, he was sensational. And Elkhart had been beating everybody back. We beat them like 31 to 14. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the place, I mean, it's just a new confidence now. The place is just, you know, we're just like going crazy. And we beat Mishawaka 7 0 the next week at a heck of a game. And uh, the thing I remember about that team was I went to, in the playoffs, we didn't get in for 7 3. I went to the playoffs and uh, I was walking in of a St. Joe against Snyder. And I heard uh, somebody from Snyder ask uh, St. Joe fans, said, how are you guys this year? And uh, they said, oh, we're not, he said, we're not bad, but I said, you're lucky you're not playing Penn. He said, Penn's the best team in the area by far now. But they lost early when they didn't have their quarterback. And that's kind of the way I felt about it. I felt like we were the best team around at that time. And uh, if it, we'd have had an all-skate like they got now, we might have made some noise in the tournament because, I mean, Hummel's unbelievable. But uh, anyway, 7-3, and again, I mean, really came back and beat a couple good teams. And uh, and if we'd have been healthy, I think we'd, uh, we'd have had a better record. But again, I don't... I don't ever, you know, fault anybody. As long as you're doing your best, by golly, that's all. That's good enough for me. All right. You had a six kids make second team all NIC, second team. Two guys make first team. But I don't want to talk about any of those guys. Okay. I want to talk about four names that I know that have made an impact from that team. Okay. That still do to this day. Pat Barrier, Tom Dilley. Dave Manspeaker, Phil Jensen. How about that? It's that's a per- for those four, four pretty good coaches. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Let's talk about those four boys. Okay. Well, uh, Pat, uh, he moved away his junior year and then came back his senior year, and he's a Penn boy, and uh, he's been on my staff, on Corey's staff. A great coach. He was a great player and uh, went into coaching, and I'm, I'm glad he did. Uh, uh, Tom Dilley, same way, he uh, he was a state champ at Chittard on the staff, then he got the Lawrence North job, and then he uh, volunteered at Butler for a couple of years, and now he's a Bishop Guerin, doing a great job. He went into coaching. Uh, Bill Jensen just had Probably uh, Phil Jensen just had uh, one of the highlights of his life. Coached his son at quarterback at Warsaw. He set some great, uh, great records at Warsaw, and uh, and then of course Dave Manspeaker, uh, great wrestling and football coach at uh, Grissom, and then now he's at Penn and uh, when Legends Advisory Group. We took him to uh, I think it was. Greenfield Central, one of those who did it, took him on our panel. He did a great, great job. Uh, good coach, and he had he's had the pleasure of coaching his one son in football and uh, wrestling, and this latest one in wrestling. And uh, hey, four four people who gave back to the game. I like that. All right, now let's go back and talk about some of those other guys. Uh, Hummel ended up making first. Team and Dave Welker at defensive tackle, those second team all NIC uh, rigs, uh, Pankowski, Witkowski, uh, Harrison, I hope I got that right, Pete Dance, and Steve Craig. That's yep. uh, Parsani. Okay, so those are that's your writing right there. So let's, uh, those were some, those were some of the kids that, uh, that made an impact for you on the field. Yeah, Pankowski, and that was I tell you about, and, and Donnie Riggs. Yeah, they, uh, and uh, the interesting thing, uh, Witkowski was a sophomore that year, and he was, uh, he was supposed to be a defensive back his first year. I told him he's a running back to the future, but we were, I wanted to play some DB. Well, he ends up playing running back after you shut out a couple times, you know. Now you're looking for a little change. And uh, yeah, they were, uh, that that was uh, that was a good group, and uh, uh, as I said at the end of the year, we're I mean that's as a coach, you're playing your best ball at the end of the season. We were 
Now the sophomore group you you found did you know athletically, mentally, physically that this group would eventually go and be as dominant as they were in 1983? Did you get it? Inkling in 1981. That how yeah, we knew they were going to be good. We played. They were a lot of. They were on kickoff teams. A lot of special teams. There were quite a few of those kids lettered that year. They, you know, they got time. They were all the ones that weren't started were all backups and, and gotten a lot of games. So, uh, yeah, they were they were good. And we and we we could see that that coming. Okay.